this latest round of layoffs and studio closures is absolutely disheartening, discouraging, and shows an absolute lack of leadership or accountability or even humanity on part of the executive teams, whether we're talking about Sony, Microsoft, Ubisoft, whoever, it doesn't matter. But the main subject of our course today, because of this horrendous news, is Microsoft. And <laughs> they closed down four studios, okay? They closed down Arcane Austin, Tango Gameworks, Roundhouse Studios, Alpha Dog Games. And it's absolutely insane to me that no, like, it, it, this should not be a normal thing. There's an entire Wikipedia page on the 2023 to 2024 layoffs happening right now. There's over 20,000 recorded recorded layoffs in the game development industry. Uh, and most of it is avoidable. Most of it is because of literal, <laughs> literally corporate greed. Um, and it, it doesn't make sense that Microsoft closed at least a couple of these because, for example, Tango Gameworks, Evil Within, Hi-Fi Rush. Uh, it, it, it's just insane. Um, I'm just going to kind of go over this article that broke the news uh, from IGN. I'm going to point out some really weird things going on, at least from a financial perspective and also from an ethical perspective as well, because, you know, for <laughs> it's crazy that the leadership is never affected in these, you know, uh, hurtful decisions or, you know, oh, our, our, our hearts go out to you kind of announcements. But the people who pay for it are the people who actually make the games, make the like make it all possible. It's extremely frustrating to see. Um, so the IGN article goes on to say that Microsoft has shut down Arkane Austin, Tango Gameworks, Alpha Dog, Roundhouse, and it's really interesting how they're doing this because the complete closure of you know studios like Arkane Austin means projects that are ongoing completely canceled. For example, Redfall, which, you know, a lot of people wanted to have some sort of comeback, right? A lot of gamers wanted some sort of comeback and you always do. You don't want a game to just fail. You want some, you know, you want them to actually invest in it. You actually want them to bring it back and make it better for everyone to enjoy. Redfall is now completely dead, dead in the water. They just killed it because the studio is laid off. It's completely gone. Um, and of course, refund the refunds are going out. Uh, Arcane Leon, which is working on Marvel's Blade, survived the layoff or the shutdowns. Bethesda Game Studios, along with Zen Max Online Studios, Machine Games, uh, ID Software, for now, are unaffected. But it should be very concerning to all of them, the people still employed, and the people who are consuming this content, that. <laughs> these studios were closed down. Um, in an email, this is what Matt Booty, the head of Xbox, Ga Xbox Game Studios, said. Okay, and this email actually really kind of ticked me off because it shows that they actually just don't care about these people. They don't care about the work they're putting in. They just care about uh, what <laughs> the, the attractive numbers. Uh, they just care about profit. Uh, it's insane. I'll get into the numbers soon. Today, I'm sharing changes we are making to our Bethesda and Zenimax teams. These changes are grounded in prioritizing high-impact titles and further investing in Bethesda's portfolio of blockbuster games and beloved worlds, which you have nurtured over many decades. To double down on these franchises and invest to build new ones requires us to look across the business to identify the opportunities that are best positioned for success, this reprioritization of titles and resources means a few teams will be realigned to others and that some of our colleagues will be leaving us. Here are the changes going to affect Arcane Austin. This studio will close with some members of the team joining other studios to work on projects across Bethesda. <laughs> Redfall's previous update will be its last as we end all development on the game. The game and its servers will remain online for players to enjoy and will provide make good offers to players who purchase the Hero DLC. Well, why? what's the point of keeping it online if it's never going to be updated? That's crazy to me. Alpha Dog Studios, and this is what ticked me off. Alpha Dog Studios? Their name is Alpha Dog Games, Matt Booty. You, don't, you can't even get 
the studios you, your company owns right. It's crazy. This studio will also close. We appreciate the team's creativity in bringing Doom to new players. And it's a mobile game. Mighty Doom is a mobile game. We'll be sunset on August 7th. And we'll be turning off the ability for players to make any purchases in the game. Tango Gameworks. And this is probably the most dumbfounding one. Because Evil Within. Uh, we have also Arcane Austin Light 2. Prey. And Prey 2. Uh, <laughs> it's insane. Hi-Fi Rush will continue to be available. Hi-Fi Rush won so many awards. It was it was released wide acclaim. A lot of people, even if it's like a sleeper game compared to like Armor Core Six or um, the other the other games that came out in 2023, it was really good. Everyone enjoyed. It. Everyone loved it. And again, I'll get into this later. I I don't understand why these people who are putting their literal blood and sweat into their products, into their games. And when they are successful, they're still punished for it because corporate. Uh, it, it's just really, really annoying. It's just really frustrating. And, you know, for a lot of us who have made connections with each other in the game, gaming industry, it's, it's heartbreaking. And Roundhouse Games, you know, the team at Roundhouse Games will be basically assimilated into ZeniMax Only Studios, although I'm sure there will still be layoffs to accommodate that you can't just <laughs> it, it's they're trying to like skirt around some of the the obvious elephant in the room the, the layoffs okay and then matt booty goes on to say we can invest more deeply into our portfolio of games and new ip you had new ips and the, mo the more insane thing about tango was it was microsoft's japanese foothold it was it was their foothold in japan it's hard establishing uh financially a foothold a, a gaming studio foothold in japan and they're just sacrificing it killing it off even though they've been very successful um why was tokyo ghostwire not good enough was hi-fi rush not good enough was it the sales uh, and again <laughs> that's very contradictory given some of their statements in the past from the xbox and microsoft leadership about how they won't uh, Axe Studios or Close Down Studios based on profits and losses. Um, and it just goes on to say, we'll provide our full support to those. Oh, it's just more corporate bullshit. These changes are not a reflection of the creativity and skill of the talented individu individuals at these teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just whatever. Uh, and then they go on to kind of say, Bethesda remains one of the key pillars of Xbox with a strong portfolio of amazing games and driving communities. As we look to the future, there's an impressive lineup of games on the horizon. In 2024 alone, we have Starfield Shattered Space, Fallout 76, Skyline Valley, Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, and The Elder Scrolls Online's Golden Road. It's not Golden Road, it's Gold Road. See, they don't even know like the names of their own teams. They don't know the names of their products. And I sure as hell bet you they don't care about that as long as they see money. And I, I find it very tasteless in a message, a company-wide message, saying hey we're laying all of you a lot of you guys off some of you will stay and join other teams um but then talk about how optimistic you are for the future i think it's very tasteless it's out of touch um I, and also it shows like more and more a lot of people have been saying that microsoft or x or xbox specifically is very directionless it feels like there's no vision there's no goal you know a lot of people are kind of miffed by the fact that they've been offering uh, Xbox exclusives as multi-platform games now, it, it, they seem all over the place, especially after they've acquired ABK and ZeniMax Media. Um, and this, of course, I don't know, like, I don't know how many more is going to be laid off. It's already, it, it's already massive how many people have been laid off. Uh, a lot of people are angry about this, rightfully so. Game devs are very frustrated. I can't imagine a prospective game developer or someone coming out of, you know, uh, you know, university into the field are going to be like, I really want to be a game developer now or whatever. Work at a dream company. There are no more dream companies. And I can't imagine veteran game developers being like, I want to stay. It's such an unstable industry for no reason. We don't see something like this in the filming industry. We don't really see things like this in uh, a lot of other creative industries, uh, even when it's like a flop. And it feels like Xbox is saying, hey, you know, if you flop, and even if you don't flop, you might get axed, you know, and it, it's crazy. They, they've said Hi-Fi Rush 
very successful. It, it, it hit all the player metrics. It hit all our internal metrics for, you know, business. And they want they want to reinvest in tech of GameWorks. But, but they, they, they shut it down. It's insane. It's in, this is absolutely insane from a business point of view. This is absolutely insane from a from a human point of view. Like it, it's crazy. And Phil Spencer, I think, is just you know I, I know a lot of people are gonna white knight for him probably or just defend him and be oh it's not his fault. But it is absolutely his fault. Um, he I think at this point he's basically a corporate scumbag who kind of tries to pass off as a gamers and so he's more relatable a lot of the things he said in public is just contradicting or turns out later and now uh a bunch of broken promises i don't think he's kept almost a single promise uh at this point uh in regards to the post acquisition moves that xbox and microsoft would make one of his statements is one thing i want to do i won't do is push against creative aspirations of our teams when a team like rare wants to do Sea of Thieves, when the team like Obsidian wants to do Grounded, when Tango wants to do Hi-Fi, when everyone thought they were probably doing the Evil Within 3. I want to give the teams to create the platform to go and push their ability, to push their aspirations. I think that can speak for itself. That statement speaks for itself over here. I mean, so what? They're going to close down an entire studio if uh, Tango, Tango's CEO or uh, studio director leaves? That's just one dude. Okay, uh, where is the stability here? And this whole talk about family, about all oh, the Xbox family, welcome to the family. Oh, you you know you're you're now our family. Oh, yeah, you laid off like thousands of people. Congratulations, that's family for you. Uh, but okay, so and this comes on the heels of them spending sixty eight point seven, almost seventy billion dollars just to acquire ABK, which is mind boggling. And then they spend almost another eight billion dollars acquiring ZeniMax Media. Uh, to acquire the Bethesda IPs and the ID software IPs and so forth. And uh, if they can spend almost $100 billion just acquiring studios, why are they shutting these down? They can certainly afford to reinvest back into these studios, even if they, you know, and actually lead. It feels like there's no leadership. It feels like they're just like giving up and saying, hey, just go. We'll just kind of try to stick to our flagship IPs. Uh, hey, if the Fallout show was a success, so maybe we should focus on Fallout 5. Well, why can't you do everything at once? You're a multi-trillion dollar company, literally. And the insane thing about this is for, for 2024 already, okay, Microsoft has actually gone against expectations in the market and gained a 17% increase in profit revenue to nearly $22 billion. Okay, so they, they have made an additional tw almost $22 billion <laughs> in revenue compared to what they were expected to gain or what they were uh, gain last year. Um, but they can't reinvest that money, apparently. Uh, they, they, they are making record profits from their gaming, sec their gaming uh, uh, arm as well. It's, it's absolutely insane to me that instead of focusing efforts in you know managing these studios managing the game developers they're just saying we're just gonna let you go and be lazy what was the point of buying up all these studios and then closing them down it makes no sense on any level to me as a consumer or even from a you know fighting like a business perspective unless of course it makes sense from the perspective of we gotta cut down cost we gotta make ourselves look attractive to shareholders. We gotta make ourselves, you know, shore up the profits and not sp and spend as little as possible. And of course, manpower, labor is typically the most expensive part of running a company like uh, like like Microsoft or Xbox. So I get that. What I don't understand is they're completely tarnishing their brand for it for just such a short term gain. Uh, long term wise, it, it's gonna have a lot of ramifications. And again, it doesn't matter if it was Microsoft doing it or Sony doing it or whatever. It's just awful. Um, and I'm hoping that maybe this will, this combined with the fact that there were some post-employment uh, legal changes in the, in the United States will hopefully lead to a boom in indie gaming because fuck these companies, really. I mean, look at this. Like, I don't want to. I don't want to be too vulgar here, but this is like pure dick writing from Mike Ibarra, who of course is retired. Uh, and he says, I see a lot of shots at Phil, 
of today's Xbox announcements. I get it, but knowing him as a human, I know this hurts him as much as anyone else, really. Phil Spencer and company. Phil Spencer and the rest of the leadership management at Microsoft and Xbox are hurt as much as the people who had to relocate states or in, in some cases countries to do their job to, to, to their new jobs. Then they get laid off a year after or two years after and so forth. Uh, they're hurt as much as the people who are now struggling with making rent, paying their bills. Uh, they now have to seek employment in an industry that's saturated with over 20,000 laid off you know, people also looking for jobs. Oh, yes. Yes. Let's feel bad for the, <laughs> the these executives who, even if they do get laid off, uh, they have golden parachutes. I mean, look at Bobby Kotick. Okay. $500 million for stepping down. You think Phil Spencer doesn't have something like that? You, you think the other executives don't have golden parachutes for, the, for, for them to safely glide down to the ground while everybody on the ground is getting buried alive? I don't feel bad at all. I think this was uh, this is absolutely insane. This is the failure of leadership, of management. It's a failure of uh, finance. It's just completely insane. I have I have nothing more to say. There's like nothing more to say. That's really it. Like absolutely, there should like P Phil Spencer and his team should be ashamed. They like, they, they lack business sense. They lack humanity um and my goodness i i don't know and i i really do hope that it gets it gets better i, I know it's going to get worse as the year goes on because some analysts have predicted that it's going to go on for two years two, or at least two years starting from 2023 or so but uh man it's it's just it's just really disheartening and this is very this is going to affect consumer the consumer end as well because Think about the studios that are closing. Think about the people getting laid off. Think about the quality of the games that will be coming out. Think about what kind of games will be coming out. Um, you know, if you guys if you guys really loved Hi-Fi Rush, if you guys really loved Prey or Wheel Within, well, too bad, <laughs> right? If you, it, it's really kind of weird to me that Microsoft is always touting Hellblade Two as a major IP for when they whenever they showcase future IPs from like future. Xbox exclusive IPs, but I'm just seeing myself. Hellblade, the Senua story, it was like, it was very niche. Whereas Hi Fi Rush or these other games made by these studios were not. So, what is like, what is the metrics here? You are also now dealing with a, a workforce that is now very tired, demoralized. Like, you're seeing your friends get like, like laid off for no reason, essentially, apart from greeting over profits how are you gonna feel are you gonna put all your efforts still in into, you, know, you know what i mean it's just like I, I i do think this is very damaging for the consumer and i think it's very damaging for the industry and it's just awful and that's all i can say and you know probably in a couple months or so sony will do more in layoffs ubisoft will do more layoffs ea will do more layoffs the tech industry in general will do more layoffs and it's just this is very tiring. Uh, if I had to summarize the sentiments of a lot of people I know, it's very tiring. It's very frustrating, and it it it, it just hopefully there's there's like something good at the end of all this.